My name is Dan Behrens, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's IoT business unit focused on our industrial security solutions. And today, we're going to dive into the integration between Cisco's Identity Services Engine and Cisco CyberVision to enable the ability to bring access control and micro-segmentation into industrial environments. Cisco has developed an entire framework around bringing security to industrial environments. Leveraging Cisco's best-in-breed IT security solutions, along with tools like Cisco CyberVision, organizations can understand what devices are deployed in their environment and recognize what are the appropriate security policies to secure those devices. Cisco's Identity Services Engine, or ICE, is a solution that enables the ability to define security policies in one location and programmatically push them out across the environment as needed. ICE can leverage context about assets in the environment, such as how they're connecting, whether it's wired or wireless or through a VPN connection, as well as details about those assets to define what are the appropriate policies to apply. ICE is critical for a zero-trust deployment, enabling the ability to define the right level of access for devices and users in the environment, the ability to segment or reduce the communications that are occurring between them, as well as the ability to contain should an event occur. Cisco's Identity Services Engine provides various mechanisms for applying security policies in the environment. Traditionally, organizations will look at leveraging VLANs as a way to segment devices. Unfortunately, when we start talking about industrial environments, in many cases, these are devices that are statically IP addressed, and the IP address is ultimately how these devices communicate. So modifying or changing the VLAN on the fly realistically can't work. That's where additional functionality, like the ability to leverage access control list or downloadable access control list, allows for that ability to dynamically authorize and provide access to those devices in the environment. However, one of the options that we'll dive a little bit deeper is the ability to leverage security group tags, which allows me to abstract away from IP address and define policies based on the types of devices and the context about those devices that I'm learning. When leveraged in an industrial environment, security group tags give me that ability to define access for devices based on the device information and where they're located inside the facility. For example, if I have an operational device inside the assembly workshop, I can simply create a policy that says any device that I've identified as an OT device in the assembly workshop is allowed to talk to other assembly workshop devices, but may not be allowed to talk to welding workshop devices, for example. This allows for a great deal of flexibility when it comes to defining and deploying security policies in the environment. This also enables the ability to apply security policies in brownfield environments where IP addresses have already been set, and the ability to change those IP addresses can often be difficult in an industrial environment. Leveraging information such as who the user is or what the device is, as well as what level of access that user or device is allowed to have in the environment. ICE has a rich set of profiling capabilities built in. However, in industrial environments, these often aren't enough. ICE could look at information like DHCP requests to understand what the vendor of the device is, or could look at details like web access information to understand is it my iPad versus my MacBook connecting to the network. Worst case scenario, we could fall back and do an Nmap scan and try and figure out or fingerprint the device based on what ports are open. In industrial environments, this frankly doesn't work. Most devices are statically IP addressed, so there aren't DHCP requests occurring. Our communications are typically not web access, so there's not typically web header details that can be looked at. And frankly, if you try to do something like an Nmap scan, if you're lucky, you could just cause a denial of service while you're doing it, but ultimately it could actually break these devices. Their IP stacks were not meant to be communicated to in that way. And that's where Cisco CyberVision comes into play. When discussing security in industrial environments, most organizations are gonna start with the deployment of an industrial DMZ, realistically the need for macro segmentation to isolate the IT organization from the operational organization and protect them from each other. However, this is really just a starting point. The next phase is the ability to bring micro-segmentation into the environment, to reduce the amount of devices that could be impacted by a breach, as well as the ability to quickly contain devices should they be compromised. Prior to defining any policies, CyberVision enables organizations to understand what does today look like, what devices are deployed in the environment, what communications are occurring between those devices, and ultimately understand which policies can be most effective. CyberVision provides the ability to group assets to ultimately understand which zones are appropriate for the environment and which communications should be occurring and the policies that can be applied to those communications. One of the difficulties about bringing security to industrial environments is the need for the IT teams and the operations teams to work together. IT is typically well versed in tools like the Identity Services Engine and defining security policies. However, they aren't often going to have the deep understanding or the context about what these assets are and what they should be doing in the environment. 
On the other side, the operations team does have that understanding of these assets. It's their job to know what these devices are doing and how they're interfacing with the real world. However, operations doesn't often deal with tools like the identity services engine and defining security policies from a network perspective. And that's where the integration with Cisco's identity services engine and CyberVision really comes together. The operations team has the ability to understand and group the resources inside CyberVision and that information, along with all of the asset details, is then shared with the identity services engine. Now ICE has a full understanding of what these devices are and what group they're a part of and can apply the appropriate security policy that's been defined by the IT team and programmatically pushed out across the environment. So let's see this in action. Starting with Cisco CyberVision, I've logged in and gone to a preset that matches the devices that are inside my lab. And what we're seeing here is a map view or a logical representation of the devices that we've discovered and the communications that are occurring between those devices. A couple of items to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, here we see this device is a PLC or a programmable logic controller from Rockwell. And if we dive into all the details, we can see that this device is at 192.168.3.50. We'll see that here in a moment. Uh, as well as the fact that we've learned information like the firmware version, the MAC address, model reference. In this case, it's a 1769L16ER. Uh, we can see the serial number, the vendor. Realistically, all the identifying information about this asset. The other items that will be a part of the demonstration is we also have another PLC here. Uh, this is another 1769, and we can see that this is at 192.168.3.40. And then I also have my programming workstation, which is running my HMI software, and that's at 192.168.3.30. What you'll notice is that I do have the ability to group resources inside CyberVision. Uh, so here we can see the fact that I have the paint group, and then with inside that paint group, I have my cell one, cell two, and cell three groups. And uh, we can see that that PLC that we were looking at, the one that's at 3.50, is in fact inside the paint group currently. Now one of the big items is I do have the ability for CyberVision to share all of the information that's learning, along with this group information that I actually assigned to the devices, to the Identity Services Engine. And we do that through a functionality known as PX Grid or Platform Exchange Grid. So here in the configuration of the center itself, I can go to Integrations and go to my PX Grid configuration. And this is where I configure CyberVision to authenticate and connect to the Identity Services Engine using that PX Grid functionality to again send all of the information that it's learning to the Identity Services Engine about these specific assets. If we move over here, I've now gone to the Identity Services Engine and into the listing of all of the devices that are authenticating against the network. And what you'll see right off the bat here is that uh, I've filtered based on just of all the devices that are connected, but we can see that a lot of these devices are getting a profile assigned to them. Some of them are cell one, some of them are paint, some of them are, are cell three, uh, matching again those groups that I have inside uh, CyberVision. But here, for example, if I go in and take a look at that same PLC, so that 192.168.3.50, and we dive into the details, uh, first of all, we can see that from a custom attribute standpoint, so uh, attributes that are being sent by CyberVision, including information like the group, we can see that right now this device is a part of the paint group. And if we look at the other attributes, everything that starts with the word asset is information that's coming from CyberVision and populating into the database inside the Identity Services Engine. So ICE now knows the fact that it's a 1769L16, it knows that it's version 31, it knows it's a serial number, and again, all of the details that CyberVision is learning are now being shared with ICE. Inside ICE, I have the ability to create a profiling policy that uses any and or all of these values. Uh, so I could suggest that I have a profile specifically for Rockwell devices that are identified as a L16ER, for example, um, or anything that's running a specific firmware. But realistically, when we start looking at bringing security to the industrial space, the type of device it is isn't really enough information, right? A programmable logic controller, the P being programmable, means that the exact same hardware, the exact same firmware could be doing very different tasks depending on how it's been programmed and what part of the process it's being leveraged in. And that's where this ability for us to leverage that custom attribute or the group information really comes into play. Now the next piece that we're gonna look at inside the Identity Services Engine is what's known as the TrustSec policy. And here's where I can decide that based on which tag is being assigned to a device, which policy gets applied. So for example, any device in my environment that has been tagged as a cell one device is allowed to talk to other cell one tag devices, but it's not allowed to talk to cell two or cell three devices. You'll also notice that paint devices are allowed to talk to everybody. So paint devices can talk to cell one and cell two and cell three in this example. In this example, I've defined a very simple policy, uh, permit or deny based on the tag that's associated. You do have the ability inside the TrustSec policy to actually define an access control list. So we could decide which specific ports or which specific types of access are allowed between these devices, a lot more than just permit or deny. 
Moving back over to the endpoint database inside ICE, which again shows the devices that have authenticated to the network, we can see that that HMI at 3.30 has in fact been profiled as a cell one device, and that the PLC at 3.50 has in fact been profiled as a paint device. Moving over to the HMI, I've got a command prompt dump, and we're gonna go ahead and ping from the HMI, again, that 3.30 device, to the PLC at 3.50. We can see that that ping is in fact successful. And again, this is because currently, the PLC itself is a part of the paint group, and the HMI is a part of cell one. And looking at my TrustSec policy, my paint devices are allowed to talk to cell one devices. Now what I'm gonna do is move this device. So the PLC that's currently a part of the paint group, I'm gonna put it inside cell two. And all I'll do is simply click on this device and modify the group. Now this would be the type of action that an operational user could perform directly inside CyberVision. Again, they have the knowledge and understanding of what these devices are and what they should be doing in the environment. And so they can recognize which devices should be grouped together. And so I'm gonna move this device from the paint into cell two. We can see that that move has occurred. If I move over to the Identity Services Engine in the Endpoint Database, we can now see that the 3.50 device has in fact moved over to cell two. And if we dive into the details, we can see that the custom attribute, the, the group has in fact changed to cell two. And now when I attempt to ping from the HMI to the PLC, it is now failing. And again, this is because my HMI, which is a part of cell one, is not allowed to talk to cell two devices, and we've moved this device into cell two. So this is an example of how all that rich industrial context about the devices that CyberVision is learning, as well as the information that operational users can provide, can be exchanged or sent to the Identity Services Engine to allow us to effectively identify and apply policies to those devices. I appreciate your time. Thank you and have a great day.